Preeti Kanakamedala. I'm an Associate Professor of History here at Bronx Community College of the City University of New York. And I was a recipient of the Mellon ACLS Community College Faculty Fellowship. Brooklyn Abolitionist has been a public history project since about 2010. Um, so way before I began my career here at CUNY and before I sort of got involved with Mellon and ACLS. It was stewarded by three cultural organizations, the Brooklyn Historical Society, which is now part of Brooklyn Public Library, Weeksville Heritage Center, and Irondale Ensemble Project. Um, I worked as the historian for this public history project, and the goal was to tell the undertold story of Brooklyn's past. Brooklyn was its own independent city until 1898. And it was to look at the free black communities and the anti-slavery movement that had really shaped that city. During that project, we created um, exhibits, walking tours, K through 12 curricula, um, and an original theater production and a website. Um, but what, ne what never happened was the book, right? The scholarly book that should have come out of it. During that time period, I became a full-time faculty member here at Bronx Community College. So I think between teaching classes and just doing smaller amounts of scholarship and also other types of service, the book just never happened for whatever reason. So really this, I would say, is its second life in terms of Brooklyn Abolitionist, the book itself. Um, and I'm so grateful to Mellon ACLS for allowing it to have a second life and really seeing, I think, something that people um, certainly in Brooklyn want to see, which is when I talk at public programs, uh, at cultural organizations, they're always saying, you know, where's the book? Um, and I feel like this has finally been allowed to happen. The book, which is out in September um, of this year, 2024, will be called Brooklynites, um, the remarkable story of the free black communities that shaped a borough. But at the heart of it, it, the story is still the same, right? It's about ordinary people doing extraordinary things, how they organized and mobilized to really shape their city and address some of the real, um, I think structural inequality and racism that existed in the city and still exists in the city today. So thinking about the lessons from the past and how we can learn from them now in the present. But also I think what readers can see that's new in the book is I've absolutely centered black women in this history and I think it's crucial. Most of the archives don't preserve black women's history, especially in the 19th century in the same way. So you're constantly reading um, against the archive. I'm inviting readers in to think about black women whose name we may never know, but they were very much residents of Brooklyn at the center um, of organizing, of social justice movements. So the book Brooklynites um, does contain a lot more original research and that was only made possible by the Mellon ACLS Community College Faculty Fellowship. I was able to go back into the archives to really piece together in minute detail what these streets would have looked like. And I was keen to do that because a lot of the traditional archives that you would look at, such as census records or maps um, or city directories, didn't have that kind of information in which black women are centered in the 19th century. So I do think of ACLS as collaborators on this project. Had they not funded it, I wouldn't have had the time to have done the research, which takes ages when it's historical research. You can spend days, weeks, months in an archive, find nothing, and then one day you'll just come across the golden ticket. So thinking of ACLS as collaborators always, um, just so respectful and so flexible, especially uh, when you're a committed um, public educator like I am. Um, we're always under-resourced here in public education in New York City. Um, and I think they were just extremely kind in being flexible with time about when money was sent over to either the institution or myself um, to think about, you know, there's just resources that I don't have that I might have in an R1, um, such as census records. There's a very famous um, database that is freely available uh, at R1 institutions that I had to pay for out of pocket. As a scholar, as somebody who does historical research, which is slow and painful, um, just really respectful of how long that takes.